It's Jeff and Jeremy in the morning. Are you in loser denial or something? It's Dumbass of the Day brought to you by Peterson's Youth Cart. Their big summer sale going on. Save 10% on walk-on bark, garden soil, compost, and topsoil from now until the end of this month at Peterson's Youth Cart in A-Town. How pathetic can some people be? I recently celebrated my fourth wedding anniversary. Thank you very much. (laughs) Alcohol may have been involved. (laughs) I love my wife, Michelle. Here's the coolest thing about marriage to me. What I love about my wife, I get to keep that forever. That's mine to keep forever. That's like having your favorite soft drink to drink for the rest of your life. Unlimited supply. But it's marriage, it's monogamy, so it's only your favorite soft drink to drink for the rest of your life. You like Mr. Pibb? You get to drink all the Mr. Pibb you want. But you wake up 10 years from now and go, you know, I'd like something hot to drink. Well, you better heat up some Mr. Pibb. (laughs) Dumbass of the day. 93.3 KZOZ. Warm Mr. P. Uh, insomnia levels uh, are up there. So Pepsi is stepping in to save the day. They oh, de- I saw this. They've debuted a new drink to help people sleep. It's called Driftwell Enhanced Water. The problem is Pepsi and corporations, they should not tie their name to it. Because when I hear Pepsi's unveiling a new drink, I'm thinking, okay, well, that drink's going to automatically have caffeine in it and it's going to be like a soft drink because it's Pepsi. It's tied to Pepsi, right? But these, Coke and Pepsi both have like 200 soft drinks. It's nuts. I mean, they have their hands in everything. I think one of them is, is has their hands in Red Bull or something or yeah. equivalent. I don't know. Energy drinks. I yeah. mean, the, the juices. I mean, they're, they're doing so, all kinds of stuff. To help people deal with all the stress that has come along with the coronavirus, which has only been brought on by themselves. Isn't this called booze? You just drink booze, and that'll help you go to sleep. We're juggling a lot of things and uh, need sleep. Um, I'm not having a good, I'm not having good nights of sleep lately. But that's just because I'm way into the Gilmore Girls. Um, <sighs> Try Yellowstone, man. That's intense. I know, and that's next. And that, and that's going to put really... Gilmore Girls to Yellowstone. Gilmore that'll Girls, be a bit of a different. Uh, Gil, Gilmore shake Girls. Up. Well, I'm, I'm right now. You know, I just finished. Cobra Kai. Or, yeah, which I know I'm way behind on the Yellowstone, but you are uh, like a decade behind. Yes, I'm way behind least on Gilmore, Gilmore Girls. Girls. I had no idea that show was that good. I would have watched it in real time. Um, you know, all the girls I, I dated in college, or they, I, I, I didn't make, make it mean to sound like I was some kind of gigolo. I mean, it just seems like a lot of the girls that I hung out with in college were into Gilmore Girls. All the girls you dated in college, were they all redheads? I know at least two were. Yes, two were. One uh, was one was a Hawaiian, the crying Hawaiian, crying Hawaiian, and then the Gothic girl, and then um, oh yeah, but that was was that a girlfriend uh, for about six weeks? Oh, okay. I don't know. That was a thing. Till spring break came along. Um, <laughs> Peace out. <laughs> Anyways, uh, the um, customers that are going to be drinking the Driftwell enhanced water are going to sip into relaxation. With a zero calorie non carbonated oh, water that, that contains two hundred milligrams of L theanine. Mm. It's an ingredient that has been found to help improve sleep quality and mitigate stress. Do you take anything? I take some vitamins my wife got me. And didn't it's, you it's a smoke digestive. Weed? It's a yeah, I, I didn't smoke weed. I took some tincture drops, some oil. But I don't do it anymore because it was it was just it was I was too foggy in the morning. So probably because I was taking too much. But it worked, man. I was out. But now I've been taking this uh, these just these vitamins. It's a, kind of a digestive vitamin, but it also is supposed to help your mood and help you sleep better. If you're having trouble it sleeping, works. though, do you think some water with this uh, vitamin, I guess, in it um, is going to really help you go to sleep? Because I know that I can. I sometimes will take like a Tylenol PM, and that's not enough to get me to go to sleep, you know? Well, you never know. You should try it because maybe your body would work better. Maybe this is more of a natural thing like melatonin. I've never actually bought melatonin. Uh, this is but. this is Pepsi's fastest product launch because they want to get 
in on it while uh, COVID fever is still a, right. a thing. Well, yeah, no, this is the whole thing, though. And this is my problem with companies like Pepsi is, you know, they jump in and they do this thing and, you know, it'll be, it's a flash in the pan. It'll be over before you yeah. know it. And I'll just waste a bunch of money trying something that's never going to work. But they're like, yeah, people are stressed. Let's try to offer something up. What's the gamble? Yeah, we may lose some money on it, but who knows? We may get some more people to try Pepsi. Because when we sell you this water, we're going to give you all this marketing material for all of our other products. I, ju- I guess I just, this is the old man, get off my lawn and me. But I miss the days when there was like five soft drinks. I really do. I feel like now it's just oversaturated. I'm glad that we have Sprite, but I think that's a Coke product. Yes, it is. Sprite but I, zero. you need you need Seven Up, mm. you need Sprite, you need Coke. You I don't need Seven Up, Sprite. Or, or either or. I mean, some people like Seven Up. What happened uh, to Sierra Mist, man? That was a Pepsi product. Coke, Pepsi. I guess it's still around. Uh, I like Sierra Mist better than Seven Up. But whatever. It, 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 maybe it, you, all you're doing is is further. Uh, you're you're going against my argument that all you need is a good staple of maybe 15 soft drinks in the world. Now yeah, we, we have way too many. Each yes. brand, each each manufacturer has over 200 brands. That's too much, man. Quit saturating the market with these drinks, Pepsi and Coke, for that matter. But today, Pepsi gets the title because it's just it's money that is not well spent. And I, you know what? It's funny because I, I I go hard. They're insulting our intelligence. Is I, what they're doing. I I, I whenever. This is probably a blessing in disguise for the Pepsi company because I remember when Everybody Loves Raymond came out. I was like, what a stupid sounding show. That show's not going to last a year. <laughs> it's like one of the most successful sitcoms of all time. Maybe Driftwell will be there. But for now, September 21st, 2020, I'm going to dub you. Jeff and Jeremy's. Dumbass of the day. 93.3 KZOC. Don't be a dummy when it comes to your landscape supplies. Go to Peterson Ucart on Gusta Road, just north of Quickie Car Wash in Atascadero. We love Ucart. Uh-huh. You say. Look at this. And this, is, this, this tells me why. Chuck E. Cheese had to file for bankruptcy in June. It's a mismanaged company. Yes, I'm sure COVID pushed it to the edge of, um, you know, where they can't operate anymore. But get this, okay? They have 7 billion prize tickets, okay? Like those little tickets to kick out the machines yeah. so you can go, 7 yeah. billion sitting in a warehouse somewhere. And they have asked the court permission to spend $2.3 because, you know, they have to track the expenses for once you're in bankruptcy and once you're in that certain chapter 11 or whatever. Um, so they had to ask the court for 2.3 million in order to destroy the 7 billion prize tickets that they have before they fall into the wrong hands because they're worried about people getting these prize tickets. Their plan is to try and reopen once they are allowed to reopen, but that the $7 billion in, or the 7 billion prize tickets will you know, somebody working at the warehouse. Which is like, fake money. It means nothing. Psh, hey, do you want to get some troll top erasers for your pencil or something along that lines? Now, how much merchandise do you think they keep? The, that tchotchke stuff. Okay. That that's the stuff you get when you go to a carnival. T-shirts and... Stickers and uh, whatever, candy you know, and posters. certificates for pizza. Yeah. And- how much do you think they have accessible at their 612 locations? Oh, I'm sure they have a warehouse and they have a bunch of stuff. In the How back, much right? is that stuff worth? The merchandise, because what they've done is they've moved over to less than the tickets. An e-ticketing <laughs> uh, 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 platform now, so a couple thousand dollars worth of stuff in the they back. They load room. up a card. Yeah. You get a card when you go in, and they yeah. load it up, and that tells you. What I've been to a Chuck E. Cheese since I was a kid, so I couldn't tell you, but but they have these tickets that are still currency in yeah. their system, and they need to destroy them because they're afraid that if they get in the wrong hands... So if they had a couple people, thousand dollars of these toys and trinkets in the back room, that would be a lot. Well, they have seven billion prize tickets. That equates to about nine million dollars in merchandise that they could trade in for these. So they're asking the court for 2.3 million to uh, destroy all these tickets. But I'm like, I understand. Now, it's 65 cargo shipping containers filled with these tickets. That's a lot of tickets. That is a lot. Like if it was a warehouse, just burn the warehouse down. That's free. Right. Just throw a match. But why couldn't... But a cargo container doesn't burn. It's steel. 
metal. But the inside of it burns. The contents inside would burn. Yeah, just throw some gas in there. But then you got to get oxygen in. And it takes huh. money. Open the door. <laughs> it shouldn't cost. It shouldn't cost you two point three million. Get these people that are dr- lighting fires on the side of the road down to your facility. Say, you guys, want to light some fires? We got sixty five fires for you to light. Go yeah. at it. Yeah, quit arresting him and take him to jail. Take him down to <laughs> Chuck E. Cheese headquarters. <laughs> take him to to the uh, Long Beach shipping yard and have him burn off the, the 65 cargo shipping containers filled we with spent tickets. Two and a half million dollars. You said 2.3, whatever. Yeah, but, but still, close enough. To, to destroy stuff. Why can't you just keep it and lock it up? Well, you can't keep it because they're afraid it's going to fall into the wrong hands. And if it falls in the wrong hands, then they'll be out $9 million worth of merchandise. So they would rather spend $2.3 million instead of um, to destroy them instead of lose that the potential of losing that $9 million in merchandise. But, why wouldn't they, but then they're going to have to go back and print new tickets, right? No. They're moved to an e-ticket model oh, where you system. load up a card. Wow. That's, uh, that's bad. But they will still accept. That's bad business management right there. Yeah, they will still accept old tickets, though. For the yeah, don't accept the old tickets. Say sorry. We're going to a new sure. system. We went to the old system. We went to hashtag new Rona. Have you been down new to normal? The, have you been down to the uh, cargo shipping uh, lot or something? What the hell? I can't I, believe really we didn't make Chuck E. Cheese dumbass. No, of the day. I know. I know. Do you remember what we did that one time with these tickets? <laughs> the fraud can be can be. Are you talking the beer garden tickets? Fraud can be committed with these tickets. Okay? These are very similar tickets. Uh, these are the red and blue ones you can buy at the office supply store, which we found out. They were the same ones that this stupid uh, beverage company was selling to go into the beer garden. Yeah. So basically, uh, well, you know what? We, we got to take a break. Uh, we got. This is back. a good story. This is how. Okay, this is how we got. I don't know how much beer we got that night. I would say the tickets were five dollars a piece. So I know I handed out a bunch of tickets. To I people. know that I would say we got an upwards of I would say close to a thousand dollars worth of beer for four ninety nine, courtesy of Staples, and that's four dollars and ninety nine cents. And the morons that work <laughs> at uh, Pacific Beverage up in Spokane. <laughs> Wake up, Jeff and Jeremy in the morning. All right, sorry, that wasn't Pacific Beverage. That was Odom I was talking about. Pacific Beverage is here. Yes. I was getting it confused, so I, I apologize if I offended anybody at Pacific Beverage. It was Odom Beverage, and they were the same type of deal. They would go to events and bring Bud and Coors and all these different beers, and then they would do a beer garden, and we were raising money. It was the Lentil Festival, right? And the money was going to the Humane Society? Yeah. And so we, the- were taking, we were taking food right out of cats and dogs' mouths. By going to Staples and buying these tickets. So we were the um, sponsor, well, not we, not Jeff and Jeremy, but the, the radio, radio station. station we worked for were the sponsor of the um, beer garden at the thing. So we had to go up and set up, like, you know. We were doing a live broadcast. Banners and all that kind of stuff. So we got there early to set it all up. And I look over and I see that there's this roll of tickets sitting there with all the beer stuff to load up the beer tent. And I look at Jeremy. And I was like, I'm pretty sure they bought those from Staples. <laughs> he's like, like, well, I got this, dude. You go to Staples. He had to drive like 10 miles. Yeah, 10 miles, you know, you know one way to go to, to Staples and then come back. But, you know, if I was going to get there and I got there and we got 5,000, a, a, a roll of 5,000 of these tickets for $4.99. And I was very, very nervous at first. But then you get that liquid courage going through. Yeah, you would think they would stamp them. They would do something to make them unique because anybody could buy these tickets. You could buy them any any office supply store, red or blue. I don't think they were red. It was blue that day. Oh, was it blue? It was okay. Blue. It was blue that night. And, um, yeah, so I remember just being there and you, like, handed me, I don't know, 100 tickets. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, well, I'm, it, I'm just handing out five strips of wish. five. Hey, you want five beers on us? There you go. Yeah. Yep, five beers from Jeff and Jeremy. There you go. Five beers from uh People from the would radio ask, station. Uh, wow, how'd you guys get so big? We were like, we're big supporters of the Humane Society. Yeah. <laughs> and we're glad you could be here to support it. And we had a, uh, actually, this was kind of interesting because we had a big radio consultant in town. Uh, the first time we met this person in person, we had talked to him over the phone. Forging lifelong friendships through fraud. That's what we were doing. Yes, he's become a very life. Yeah, we're I'm playing golf gonna, with him on yeah, Saturday. We're going to play <laughs> golf next week. 20 years later. I don't know. And he comes to town. And he's like, man, you guys are really connected. I'm like, yep. don't worry about having to buy a beer tonight. It's all on us. Yep. Kenny. Uh-huh. So we gave we gave him a bunch of beers. And then, God, if we were smart, I mean, I'm sure you gave them to girls. You were single at yes, the time. Yes, I would have just yes. been giving them to girls. Yeah, I was giving them to girls left and right. Like, yeah, with my phone number on the back. Hey, there you go. It was uh, a very vibrant, me, there's the phone number. It was a very vibrant beer garden. So what I'm saying for the for Chuck E. Cheese's uh, on, on, on their behalf is they um, 
are smart to do, get rid of these tickets because if they do follow the wrong hands, people will take advantage of them. But don't spend two point three million dollars to do so. Because There's just got to be a better way. There has to be a better way. I mean, what do you have to do? Shred them? Well, you're, you're gonna, I mean, yeah, well, light them on fire. Just light them on fire. Sell them. So just say, you know, we're discontinuing the program. Sorry, everybody that See, lost. This is the problem with today's today's the way the things are structured. As I, I say, all you have to do is burn them. Are you kidding me? It's not that easy. They do need to spend $2.3 million on it because if you were to burn 65 cargo containers filled with paper, you know, the environmental agency would be there in a minute. Oh, yeah. You can't <laughs> just do that. What are you doing? Do you have a permit to do this? So then you got to go get the permit. Recycle to do them. You have, call the recycling company to come pick them up. Hey, I got all this free recycling for you. <sighs> That's what I do. And I think they would charge you for that. There's or sell them to fee. other companies that need to sell them to Office Depot. Say, hey, we're going to give you the, the gray tickets. We got we got 65 million gray tickets. We're going to give them to you. You just, you just have to come get them. I don't know. There's going to be a better way to sell them. Yeah, than having to spend money. Say, we're going to do a new system where I we shouldn't know. have to spend to get rid of them. I don't know. It just seems silly to me seems that you lazy. have to spend $2.3 million to get rid of paper. Paper. Something that is, I mean, like, what do you? What do you do when you have to get rid of something? Throw it in the garbage, right? Yeah. Until, you know, the garbage company's like, all right, well, you know, hey, all these extra boxes out here, we're going to charge you for that. So I just give to Goodwill. I, I was... Do I, not do that, by the way. What? <laughs> Clothes. Do not give your garbage can you to Goodwill. Give, can you give Goodwill socks as long as there's not yeah, holes in them? You can't. You can't give what them... What if they're stretched out? You cannot give them... Um, I'm learning you can't give them, like, baby stuff. Oh, I don't have any baby stuff. I just have a lot of old socks I want to get rid of. Um, no holes in them. You though. can't give them baby stuff, and you can't give them pillows or stuffed animals. They or don't glass. Take... They don't like glass either. Well, you don't. How Try many? Give them a glass table. They're like, sorry, that'll kill somebody here. Can't do it. You're Liability. Stuffed animals we have, and you can't get rid of them. If I'd have known a long time ago, where do they go to the dump? They incinerate. They get sold at garage sales, but still, we can't get enough of them. I mean, we're sitting on an inventory, kind of like Chuck E. Cheese is sitting on tickets. I mean, we have sixty-five cargo containers sitting down in a field in Templeton somewhere. Yeah, the burning of the stuffed animals. Get a get a burn barrel. I mean, I don't know what how you get rid of the stuffed animals either. You know, because I mean, you can't burn right now with all the smoke. You have to throw them away one by one. You know, when you have extra room in your garbage can. I mean, that's what we have to do with them. And those were like 15 bucks a pop, you know, at right. low end, 15 bucks a pop. Jeez. So it's, it, there's certain things that. Sounds like white privilege problems to me, Jeff. Other things that are hard to get rid of. TVs, refrigerators. You can't get rid of a refrigerator. It's impossible to get rid of a refrigerator. I would not even know how. Do you take it to the dump? Right? I don't even know what to do with it. What a lot of people do is they drive it out to a country road and push it off of a cliff. Because that's what <laughs> a lot of people end up doing, which is highly illegal as well. But yeah, refrigerators are impossible to get rid of. That's why when the gal put the offer in on our house, I was like, she wanted the refrigerator. I was like, yeah, take it. Well, it was, it was new, wasn't it? It was a newer refrigerator, yeah. But I mean, it's like, what, I don't know the next place that I live if the refri- that refrigerator is going to fit the What about area. a washer and dryer? Same thing, right? Yeah, they're hard to get rid of. These, these things are hard to get rid of. Stoves, all these things. I guess now you can add raffle tickets. Well, I would think a stove you could take to like a recycling metal place and they would recycle the metal. There are appliance stores around here that sell secondhand appliances. Um, mm. and they, and they do a, a pretty good job with them too. They'll take them if they have the space. If they don't have the space, you're stuck. You're sitting on them. What do you do with oil? I don't need to do anything with oil. I, I, I go to, I go to, what J- if you had some oil you needed to get rid of it? I go to J5 you, and you take I, it to a, uh, you probably I, take it to a, a I give them mechanic uh, 60 to $70 and I say, okay, uh, thanks for changing my oil.